You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of of uh, Psychic Connections: Elliot's Path. So we're going to be doing a double episode today. I am going to uh, release them as two separate videos. Uh, I finished up Jude's path. It was took me all of about like six minutes. It, it was really, really quick. And uh, so there's no new content for Jude and the point seven update. However, there is new content for the next day with Elliot. So that's where we're gonna pick up, and uh, let's just jump right into it. Let's uh, get some Panther Daddy back into the mix. Uh, you know, the the original Panther Daddy, Elliot. <laughs> all right, let's do it. <clears throat> Alright. Well, I don't think Elliot is wrong. I do know that not having that conversation can lead to misunderstandings. However, if they'd been together for three years without having that conversation, there's probably a lot of miscommunication. Well, it seems like it's still made a, it's still a little fresh, but I assume you've been trying to get back out there. Heh, <laughs> not as hard as you might think. I talk a mean game, and sure, I could probably find a quick hookup, but I'm not looking for someone to just have a good romp with. Call me old-fashioned, but I really do believe in the one. Oh, he's a, he's a hopeless romantic. For a while, I really thought that was Liam, but now, well, who knows? I'm practically 30, maybe I've just missed that window of opportunity. Oh hell, you make me feel old, I am 30. Hey, you're not that old. Besides, if there was an age limit on falling in love, that means my parents are doomed after splitting up. In an effort to cheer him up, I slowly, I slowly placed my palm atop the sulking cat's clenched hand. Elliot smiles at me warmly, clearly appreciating the gesture and the sentiment behind it. His tail perks back up from a droopy state, and I can see the tension releasing from his shoulders. Thanks, Mason. I think I needed to hear that. Here, give me a give me a second. I'm gonna go check on your clothes again. The large panther stands up from his seated position next to me and wanders his way out out of the tent once more, grabbing the rest of his clothes on the way out. Perhaps I shouldn't have brought up his past like that. You'd think I'd know better. He takes a bit longer to return this time, but this time he returns with my clothing in hand. It's not perfect, but it's a way better than it was before. Thank you, Elliot. I really do appreciate it. Slipping out of the sleeping bag, I begin dressing myself into my clothes. While they, were now, while they were now dry, they did have an unfortunate stiffness to them that likely won't go away until they are properly washed. However, they'll have to do for today. Turning around, I catch Elliot quickly ducking his head out of the tent. Was he watching me put my clothes back on? Chuckling to myself, I finally get out of the little tent to greet the outdoors for the first time today. Let's go ahead and save that right there. Elliot begins wandering down to his truck, but I notice Jude sitting idly by while looking up at the sky. Hey Jude, where's everybody at? I don't know where the mud is. Zoe went to look for him. Quinn's out at the lake swimming. You didn't feel like going with him? I didn't like sw I don't like swimming, and I don't and I didn't bring any trunks, so a hard pass on that. Oh. Alright, you two. Breakfast is on! Elliot walks up to Jude and I, and I just in time. And, oh, I'm sorry. Elliot walks up to Jude and I just in time to cut out a growing awkward silence between us. In his hands, he's holding several packages of what appears to be energy bars. Elliot hands one to Jude and then myself. I tentatively scan the wrapping of the gift I've been given to learn about his contents. Bart's breakfast bowl bar. The label depicts a lumberjack wolf with giant muscles flexing with an axe. A caption stating it has optimized morning nutrition in every bite. Oh my god! How many friends does he have who are... Who are all hawking their products onto people? It's got all your basic nutrients in a convenient bar. I figured it'd be a good one for a trip like this. I didn't want to pack too much. The rest of the food I packed were saving for a late lunch. I've got to be sure to save at least three of these bad boys for the others. Well, two of them are coming up the hill now, so you won't need to hold on to them for very long. Sure enough, in a matter of seconds, Quinn and Aiden began walking up the hill. Aiden had a sour expression on his mug, which was easily explained by the nude bunny walking beside him. Uh-oh. Quinn grabbed a towel hanging off a tree branch, and Elliot approached the two with his energy bars. 
Aiden scowled at the offering, yet still grabbed it before storming off into his tent, while Quinn gleefully took his. Looking around, I see Quinn drying himself off, while Jude continues his carving from last night. Elliot sits down on a log, humming to himself. Meanwhile, I can hear Aiden rummaging around in his tent. But with Elliot, he's the boy. He's the best boy. For this run. Walking over to Elliot, I listen in more to the tune he's humming. It sounds vaguely familiar, but I can't quite place it. Hey there, big guy. What you humming? Oh, uh, hi, Mason. It's nothing special. Just an old ditty my mother used to sing to me. It's a little funny how things like that just pop into your head sometimes. Like, sometimes I might be cleaning some tables at the cafe, and then BAM! I'll have a song from the radio stuck in my head. Yeah, earworms can be the worst. They're stuck in your head for ages, and even when they go away for a bit, they can come right back. Well, thankfully I've got you to distract me with some interesting conversation to pull it out of my mind. Elliot looks at me rather suggestively, and I realize he's genu he genuinely expects me to come up with something to talk about. Uh, oh, hell! What you gonna... One of these options is not like the others. Uh... Oh, hell, guys, let's do sex. Let's go for the sexy time. So it came up the other night that you've only been with four other people. Yes, while I might be a reputable flirt, I consider my romantic history to actually be quite tame. It takes a lot to keep myself from laughing at this. It's almost become a gag how often sexual conversation seems to arise around Elliot. If you don't mind me asking, Elliot, what was your first time like? My first time? Well, for one thing, I don't know what the hell I was doing. Neither did he, really. Which was evident in how uncomfortable the whole thing was. First we tried to do it without enough lube, then we were using what was probably far too much lube. Yeah, I can relate. The worst part, though, was when we were interrupted by his dad. <laughs> oh, that's so bad! Are you winning, son? Oh my god. <clears throat> Shut up! True story. Honestly, the whole thing was so embarrassing that it made the couple of times we tried afterwards just too awkward for the both of us. Now, you've got me curious. What was your first time like? Oh, I was trying, just trying to come up with an interesting conversation. I wasn't really prepared for a counter question. Now, how should I go about avoiding giving an answer? You know, a gentleman really doesn't kiss and tell. Oh no, you are not pulling that card on me. I just, I just told you a really embarrassing story. Which you did so willingly, and I really appreciate that. Elliot begins pouting as I, as I start playfully poking fun at him. He definitely isn't happy that I pulled a fast one like this on him. Hey, I'm just teasing you. Lighten up. Seriously, I'm sorry. As I continue pleading with Elliot, his face gradually relaxes, and for a moment I swear I can almost see a grin spreading across his face. Oh, you jerk, you're messing with me, aren't you? Guilty as charged. I'm sorry I couldn't help it. You're just so fun to tease. I thought I might have genuinely hurt your feelings for a second there. Well, don't you worry. I'm not that sensitive. Unlike a certain deer I know. My eyes naturally drift towards Jude, who I only just now notice is talking with to Zoe, who seems to have reappeared from her walk in the woods. She walks away from him and enters Aiden's tent, and Jude continues whittling away at his block of wood. You know, Mason, speaking of sensitivity... Let him finish. I'm sure it probably is not an innuendo like my gutter-riddled brain is thinking. My hands are a bit warm from the other day. Do you mind helping me gather some firewood for when it's time to get dinner started? Sure, if you think that I can help. Elliot leads me away into the woods and instructs me on what does and doesn't make for good firewood. As we make multiple treks to and from the trees, I notice Zoe talking with Quinn or Jude, and on our last trip, the three of them all seem to disappear from the camp. At this time, Aiden emerges from his tent and begins approaching us. Need any help? Oh, no worries. I think there's enough wood now for a good fire later tonight. I see. Do you know where Quinn ran off to? Jude pulled him aside to go have a chat. Not sure what about, but it seemed serious. If 
I were to guess, though, given how seriously they look, given how serious they looked, it probably has something to do with that incident with his roommate. I presume she went with them to, med to mediate. I see. If I might ask, what do you make of all of it? Well, this Greg sounds like a real piece of work. At the end of the day, though, we need to trust Quinn will make the best decisions for himself. Right. But you don't think it's more than that? We need to make sure this delinquent is punished properly for what he did. What do you think, Mason? Yes, I'm rather curious myself as well. I can understand both of their views on this, and I somewhat agree with each of them. God, stop messaging me, people. Come on. Um... This seems like something important, so I'm gonna... Mm -hmm. I'm also curious about the other conversations, so... Tell you guys what... How about we... Back up a little bit... And see what the other how the other conversations play out. Yeah, let's do that. For the sake of variety. Uh, school. Okay. My adjustment to school has been going pretty well, although I'm not sure how it's going to be living with Quinn yet. If you want advice on how to live with Quinn, ask Aiden. They did live together for a couple years. Then again, he does have servants cleaning up after him, so Quinn might not exactly be cleaning up after himself. Still, I'm sure it'll be fine. Quinn's nice, and what more can you really ask for? You're not exactly instilling me with much confidence in Quinn here. Oh, sorry, I just thought you two being roommates was a good thing. I didn't mean to talk about him negatively. Elliot's ears droop down and his tail droops low, laying down, laying down the stump looking almost lifeless. Hey, I'm just teasing you. Lighten up. Seriously, I'm sorry. Wait a second. Is this going to be the same thing? Okay. Alright, let's back up and do the other one. Alright. Well, let me ask you this. What is your favorite thing to bake? You really want to know what I like baking? Why not? I know you can make a mean cup of coffee, and I've tried a couple other things you've made. Well, to be honest, my favorite thing to bake is cheesecake. Man after my own fucking heart over here. Really? I didn't expect that, to be honest. It's just so delicate. And with a cream cheese base, then there are there really are many different flavor profiles you can build off of. What's your favorite flavor to make? That's an easy one. It's white chocolate with a raspberry drizzle, 110%. It's creamy, it's sweet, and it has just a slight tang from the fruit. Leave it to Elliot to paint me a decadent mental image of food porn. I can practically taste this cake from his description alone. Maybe with enough coaxing, I might be able to convince him to bake some for me later. You know, I've heard cheesecake can be really bad for your health, so the next time you make some, just give it to me instead. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Are you calling me fat? What? No, I'm just saying that... Elliot's tail begins thrashing about, and I swear it's almost slightly bristled. It looks like, he might, it looks like I may have struck a nerve here. Perhaps I should have known better than to attack a baker's sweet tooth. Let's get back to where we were. Wait a second. Um. Oh my god, guys! Okay. Alright. We're almost there. Okay. Um. Hell, I need to be the voice of reason in this, but at the same time, I want to see Greg get his ass kicked. Uh, let's see what passive does. Let's save right here. Okay. I think Elliot's right. Quinn is a grown man, and this type of situation is delicate. However, however he wants to handle it, it is ultimately going to be his decision. Even if we want to intervene in the system more directly, we shouldn't do we shouldn't do so unless Quinn asks us to. 
Some people don't know when to ask for help, though. It's easy to say that, but it's harder when you can actually see how much that person is struggling. They both are making valid points, but this seems like it's about to get a little too heated. Okay, you two, let's break it up. What matters is that Zoe is dealing with Greg, and that Quinn is going to be alright. Right? The two men grumble their disapproval, but they seem to concede and agree with me. Elliot moves on with getting the food from his truck, while Aiden alternates between watching Elliot and checking his phone. Jude, Quinn, and Zoe eventually return to us as the sun begins lowering in the sky. Their timing could not have been better, as Elliot, as Elliot had just begun putting the fire together. Watching him bring the flame to life, Zoe perches herself next to me while Quinn and Jude take up a log on the side. Zoe leans close to me and begins speaking to me in an almost whisper. So, how are you doing? I hope you didn't have any trouble last night. It's a fair question, and one I'm not too sure how to answer. Oh, and there is the little alarm. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, now, the, the creators have said, I've, uh, uh Rick has told uh, his patrons and such that they're not, there's not going to be any more updates for the game until next year. So, for any more updates for Jude's playthrough, I'm going to have to wait till the next build comes out, which could be a little while. So, you know, I'll be working through the other characters as that goes on. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the notification bell until the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!